watching Govs Radio. This is where you go if you want to see something or if you want to hear something funny. <laughs> Coming up in just a couple minutes. This is a joke I told. What? What? I'm not on Gov Radio. Call the police. Call my agent. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Or good afternoon, or good night. It's always morning for me anyway. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Welcome to Let Them Cook! Let Them Cook! A superhero podcast. That is right. We talk about superheroes here and nothing else. Well, and other stuff, but you know. <laughs> and villains. And right. villains. You know, they are people too. Yeah. Or intensity. Like, there's so much, you know? We're accepting of all kinds here, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. My name is James. And I am Zach Walker. And we love superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling today, Zach? I'm chilling, you know? It's our first podcast, you know, like, you know, I'm feeling the uh, the energy, you know? It's exciting. This go. is this yeah. is our first show. This is. Yeah. I'm very happy to be doing this. Especially with you. Yeah, likewise, of yeah. course. Yeah, you didn't have to add that if you didn't feel it. No, I'm playing. <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking about all things superheroes. We're going to be bringing up stuff as topic as heroes versus heroes, upcoming events, whether it's Marvel or DC, comics or movies. And we even watch certain new movies as well. So that way we can criticize them and tell you guys our opinions or even educate you guys on certain heroes information. Yeah. Yeah. So what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so it's super excited. But uh, I think first we want to introduce ourselves to let you guys know about our knowledge and our love for superheroes. Um, for me, um, I fell in love with superheroes at the age of 11. You know, um, I remember I played my first like Marvel video game, which was like Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And I fell in love with like certain superheroes. So like for me, my favorite heroes is always going to be like Elektra. Even though some people was like, she's not a hero. She's a vigilante. Okay, Marks. But, um, you know, I like Elektra. Like, that's my... Hey, I mean, hero is literally in the name anti-hero. So, like... True. They are anti-heroes, True. but they're still heroes. True. Let them cook. Let them cook. Let them cook. Right? Exactly. Um, you know, and I love Spider-Man. You know, who doesn't like a good Spider-Man? You know, even though there's, like, only one superior Spider-Man. Whoa. I said Shots I, fired I said for I all you non-Peter Parker fans. I said what I said. You guys like Miles? You like Gwen? <laughs> What's another Spider-Man that they like? You know, he says, screw them all. He likes the superior Peter Parker. As long as it's not the Spider-Women movie, you know, I think we're finding. The Spider-Woman. Oh, Madam Web? Yeah, Madam Web. Oh, yeah. Probably the less said about that one, the yeah, better, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I love also Captain Marvel. 
Mrs. Marvel, aka Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers. Sorry, anyone who knows me know I, I do not care for the other Miss Marvel, but I do like Captain Marvel. I know a lot of you boys out there hate Captain Marvel, but I love her. She's cool. And then Deadpool is cool. I love Deadpool. I love Batman. I love Huntress. So those are my favorite characters. You know, like when I watch like Marvel and DC and superhero stuff, like I like them a lot because I relate to them in certain things. You know, what else you that? Yeah, so uh, I would say that I started getting into superheroes around the uh, the same time that you have, maybe like 11. Mm-hmm. Um, but even before that, like I kind of, you know, I grew up on Batman, you know. Mm-hmm. The first comic I ever read was Batman, Batman, The Killing Joke, you know. I was like maybe like six or seven when I read that. Reading that? <laughs> Very graphic for a seven-year-old to be reading. But hey, man, I'm one of those guys who's uh, basically. I'm, I'm uh, sure your dad was just happy you was reading. Maybe he was, maybe. <laughs> maybe he was thinking that all I was looking at were the pictures. Maybe he's thinking that's what made me so stupid today. Um, all right, he's uh, shaking his head. I guess he doesn't agree with that. Well, I should take that as a compliment then. Um, where was I going? Oh, yeah. So I'm one of those guys who just, like, gets a, you know, a hard-on for Batman, oh. you know, in, like, a non-gay sort of way. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, like a lot of Batman fans do. He's my number one superhero. You know, if he were alive, I would marry him again. No homo. <laughs> I also like Huntress because you said you like Huntress. Now, yeah. that is definitely a, I would definitely bad. Is there a reason why you like Huntress? I, I wouldn't know. Oh, like, yeah. That's where I was going. Okay. She's, yeah. she's, she's a baddie. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> question is also a dope one. I like Question. He's got no face and he's just a badass. Who also has a thing for Huntress. So you guys exactly. got you guys got that going. I on. lived through question, bro. I lived through question. My man, my man bagged her. <laughs> <laughs> so it, you might already know it's a trend. I like the darker kind of uh characters, you know. You do when like it, dark. You like villains too a lot. Yeah, I was just gonna say if we switch over to Marvel, I like more the villains in Marvel than I do the heroes. Hmm, interesting. Like, I mean, I like Moon Knight because that's a dark hero. But mm-hmm. when it comes to other characters I like, you know, Kang, bro. Kang is my favorite favorite Marvel character, period. Not just villain, character, period. Kang is just awesome. And then I also like Scarlet Witch for the same reason I of like Huntress. Of course you do. The exact same reason do. I like Huntress. Of course you do. You and every other fanboy. Actually, Scarlet Witch. Like, okay, we get it. Wanda Maximoff can get it, bro. Is that before or after she married her brother in one comic? Oop. Shots fired. Sorry. You know, all I have to say to that is, I wish I was Pietro. Wow, that's <laughs> crazy. We nah, do not, nah, we nah, do not cap, condone that cap. here. Nah. <laughs> oh, also, and we will get to this later. Eddie Brock Venom, mm-hmm. who was not, I wouldn't have put him on my top five, but... After recent, you know, Venom story, a certain certain war, I feel like you're picking at <laughs> Eddie Brock is going up there for me. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you're gonna have to explain we'll get to, to that. Us about yeah. that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. So those are the heroes I like. Um, I'm personally more of a DC guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I always just grew up that way, you know, because I grew up on Batman. Yeah. I believe you were more of a Marvel guy, right, James? I am. Actually, fun fact. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people um, is about to give me flock for this, but uh, I used to hate DC, which is funny, right? It's oh, it's okay. funny that I said that. It's funny that I said that. I, I think do. you're I, the villain to my hero. I here. think I am. But hold on, hear me out, because it's funny that I say that because I used to watch Justice League when it came out, like Unlimited and all of that. So in Teen Titans. Fire. So you would think, like, how do you hate just like DC, but you watch Teen Titans and Justice League? I don't know. I think I just old alliance to marvel for some reason and i was man young so i felt like you know i don't don't like dc i don't care about superman but i do like batman you know but it wasn't i didn't drop that until i got older and then i played this video game called you know dc universal online and like i started to get more and more involved (laughs) with my character with the heroes and everything and then i started to learn more and i was like wait i have knowledge from like justice league unlimited and then like reading certain comics so i was like Wait, maybe I'm not. Maybe I don't hate DC, you know? So, but I, I am I am more Marvel-based. Like, I do love Marvel. Like, anyone who knows me know, I know everything to anything about X-Men. Like, any any type of question you have about X-Men, I'm your guy. Like, that's my go-to. That's my expertise. Like, I don't, I don't re- as of recently, I'm not caring for the newer X-Men comics. I don't know. I feel like they're trying to be more edgy and... It just doesn't do it for me, but anything with X Men related, like oh, I will say X Men ninety seven, Chef Kiss, love you. Um, X Men ninety seven was tastefully done. Um, plot, 
and everything. It just sucks that they uh, fired a writer for it because of um, a certain occupation he had on Twitter. But, um, uh, you know, regardless, regardless, it shows you that he, he really, like, captured um, not just the lore and taking it back from the 90s X-Men to bring it to 2024, but he, you could see the passion in the dialogue. And it's so beautifully written with the characters. And um, you, you and I, we're going to watch it. And you're going to see what I mean by X-Men 97 being so good. Bro, X-Men 97 was so good because every time the, the episode dropped the next day on Twitter, it's like people I posting clips. That. Like, yeah. that's how good X-Men 97 was. Like, yeah. Dude, because uh, I, I never got a chance to watch X-Men 97. I actually still have to catch up on the old animated series. Fair. But, fair. like, from everything that I saw, like, literally, it, it, it was weird because normally I'm watching everything Marvel, MCU, yeah. And that was the first time that I couldn't watch it because I wanted to catch up. Yeah. But it, it was like every time I went on Twitter the next day, it's like everyone's just raving about it. Yeah, no, YouTube, it was something Instagram. to talk about. It was something to talk about, bro. I'm not going to lie. I missed it. I missed the hype. I'm not going to lie. Like the writer for X-Men 97 deserve his flowers because, and it sucks now because I'm kind of nervous. Marvel should let that man cook. I Let him cook. Let him cook. No, but I, it sucks because we're not like if we get a new season for x-men 97 like for season two we're not gonna have that writer right so it's like you're gonna tell you're gonna know when something's off right like you're gonna know like this feels different from when i was watching the new x-men 97 you know what i'm saying now that we have a new writer i mean don't get me wrong let me not think like that because i don't want to be like those other fanboys that don't give like things a chance but i just know if you already show me your work and it's that good like i already am going to have a high expectation of how the show is supposed to be you know, so that's just how I feel. Well, hopefully, hopefully they do end up delivering. Yeah, because that would probably be, I mean, among many other disappointments between <laughs> Marvel lately, that would be one of their biggest considering that's right. Like Khan, right? Like Khan. Yeah. With the like King Khan. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Kang. Kang. Oh, Kang. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, as a Kang fan. All that shit last year was so disappointing. Yeah. I mean, that actor got it coming. You know, he put himself in that position. And he could have been really, really big with this character, he right? Could've. Like, it could have went a lot of places. You could have done yeah. a lot with that, you know, like start the next phase of the MCU with that if you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, that's where they were going with it. Yeah. And I mean, like, they, they had set so many pieces in place. And just knowing Kang from the comics, like, he has so many connective tissues everywhere. Yeah. Like, and... And then for that character, and with the act that they got, you know, for, like, where you need to play multiple different versions of that character that mm -hmm. are so, like, so different from each other, and that actor's range, like, there would have been such a beautifully crafted story there. Yeah. But, you know, the actor put himself in that position, and Marvel also did what, when they couldn't write the character correctly. I mean, I guess they could have pulled a Flash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that might they could have pulled the flash, but nah, nah, like that was already out of pocket if you think about it. Because he had so much stuff on him, they still went with the movie, and then on top of that, the movie wasn't even good. Like, yeah, it, yeah, I don't, like what? What was like the the less like they like you know it was like a juggling thing. It was like either just release it and make whatever they can off of it since they already had it or just fire the actor and scrap the whole thing. Yeah. What they, which they did with Kang. Did you think because of production and time management, like, they really couldn't, so they just said, like, uh, let's just scrape by with this one. You know what I'm saying? Because you, I, I really want to know, like, what was the team meeting about to be like, yeah, let's keep him because we have no choice and we almost done with the movie. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious on, like, what's your opinion on that? For them keeping Ezra? Yeah. I honestly... Because I believe they already shot, like, most of the movie when, like, all of his allegations were coming out. Yeah. Um, There were there was more drama going on. Didn't he just, kidnap somebody and run away? Like, run away? like <laughs> it, it, it's not funny, it but it's like, it's like... No, I have, I'm not laughing because it's funny. Yeah. I'm just laughing because it's, like, ironic. Like, like <laughs> how does someone do this and he's in this huge blockbuster that's movie? what i'm saying like it's kind of crazy like i don't i something something is definitely like up over there like dc and warner brothers mm. like either they just they were just they just felt that they were like desperate for the money or yeah or that i don't know or they were coerced into Me it personally i, I would have just like scrapped it you know put it on a pause on it and then find a way to bring in um 
What was the boy name that was in the CW Flash? The CW oh, actor uh, Flash. Uh, Grant. Grant. Grant Gustin, I think his name was? Something like that. Grant yeah. Gustin. I'm pretty sure that was his name. But I think, and he, I personally thought, I never watched the CW Flash like that. I think, like, I watched a little bit of here and there. But I think he was a better fitting Flash than Ezra. Yeah, than Ezra before anyway. Because I don't, I never cared for Ezra. He just seemed, I just never cared for him as Flash. Like, I didn't find him funny. Like, he didn't, he didn't give me Flash energy. Yeah. So, I, I haven't seen the entirety of Flash show, although I've seen parts of it. Yeah. And that, that actor was solid. The actor was you talk so about the solid. CW, uh, the CW, Graham, yeah. yeah. That actor was solid. Yeah. But the uh, in terms of like the Ezra, you know, um, they had him in Justice League, and then uh, you know, then the Flash. Yeah. And I just always, like you're saying, I always felt like that this is not Barry Allen. You know? Yeah. This is like I, I guess you can you can kind of compare it more to like Wally West, I guess. I mean, it doesn't look like Wally West, but I just mean because he's like he's got more of like the kid, immature aspects. Yeah, he did. Have they were that. trying to make him like Spider Man, yeah. which is usually what Wally West is like. Yeah. So, it, no, I you know, it's really it's the money because I was also thinking I was thinking that it has like to they be had the Michael money. Keaton in it. Mm -hmm. They had a Supergirl in it. They're also going back to Man of Steel, which people hate at the time, but apparently love now. Yeah. I don't like Man of Steel for all you Man of Steel lovers out there. Oh, you don't like Man of Steel. That's I don't think me and you ever talked. I don't think me and you ever talked about that. You don't like Man of Steel. No, I do not. A lot of people that I feel like that movie is like kind of split between audiences, mm -hmm. but most people agree that Henry Cavill was a good Superman. I mean, yeah. And I, I'm just gonna say I hated his performance as Superman. Mm. Maybe it was like the directors, but I also just look at the guy and he just doesn't look like Superman to me. You know, yeah, Henry Cavill. Don't get me wrong. Henry Cavill seems like a great actor, mm -hmm. and I think for other roles like maybe like The Witcher and all that, you know, he does fine. But as Superman, I just I don't get the same effect yeah. as like when Christopher Reeve. That's kind of hard too, you know. Like I mean, from someone like me, like if anyone want to know, I, I am an actor. Um, I went to school for acting, but it's it's so hard, right, to like follow in someone's steps that looks and portrays Superman, and then now you you're next up, and it's like you have this pretty big shoes to fill. Not just because he's Superman, but you're after Henry. You know, like that's kind of hard. Like it I is hard. I and while I do agree with you, at the same time, look at how many Batman and Jokers there are. So many times, like, then will the next one come out? And people are like, okay, this is the best one. Mm -hmm. And the next one comes out, okay, this is the best one. It's like, people argue constantly are one upping the last one. With people that. argue currently that, um, what's his name? The, the newest Batman, Robert Patterson, was a great Batman. People, people, I see a lot of people say that. That he was a great Batman? Yeah, like, he, he's like one of the best ones. And I was like, really? That's what I mean. And I remember. Like, literally, people were just saying Ben Affleck is the best. Yeah. And then before him, people were saying that Christopher Nolan was the best. Mm -hmm. You know? And I guess if I if I did have to give my opinions on best the best Batman, I'm curious, go. Who's, who's your best Batman? Well, first, I'm going to come at all of you Ben Affleck fans out there. Oh, that's I, crazy. Again, ben Affleck is a good actor. <laughs> I really crazy. like his movies. You know, he's a, he's, a, he's a good actor, the man. But as a Batman... I know so many people loved him. I didn't hate him as Batman. He was kind of trash. I don't know. That's, but okay. But that hurt. If I had to go for like, so I always, I always kind of like have like these top three. Okay. Really. It's like the best live action Batman, and then there's um, best Batman anything. Yeah. And then I would say there's the best Batman uh, movie. Okay. Okay. Um. So, the best movie was definitely the Batman. Mm -hmm. That was definitely the Batman. Like, had perfect story. The tone was all right. Like, the portrayal of the characters were all correct. Um, I would say the best... The best actor... So, the best actor, I would say, is Kevin Conroy. And I, I could even say that for live action, too, because he's done that. I was about to say cop out, because I, I thought you was going to bring up the voice acting, but okay. But he's done it in live action, so I can yeah. fairly say that he's he can top the other ones in live action since he did it. Yeah. And I don't care what people say. It's just he's literally, like, when I read the comics, it's his voice. Yeah. And also, rest in peace to that man, because, like, God, that was so sad. Mm -hmm. That was so sad. That was just sad. Mm -hmm. Loved him as Batman. He was literally the best. Yeah. What was the other one? Oh, best Batman anything. Yeah. Okay. Best Batman anything. 
This one's going to be a crazy one because mm-hmm. it's not even out yet. But just from what I'm seeing, it looks like... So, there are all my years of living. Oh, boy. All almost 24 years of living. Oh, boy. I have never felt that there's been a proper Batman adaptation ever, right? And I always that's felt... Because that's because that's your the, favorite Batman adaptation. No, no, no. There, there's never been a perfect Batman adaptation. Like, I always look at the comics Batman, and none of the movies or shows or anything got him perfect. Mm. The closest I always felt was the animated series. Right? Yeah. And I would say that would still stand... I mean, that probably still stands now, but, you know, they have an upcoming show that's literally... They, they're describing it as that the Batman animated series, mm. but for adults. And just from what I'm seeing in the trailer, it's called Batman the Capes Crusader. What I'm seeing, or Batman Capes Crusader. I just want to let it be known, he is, um, I'm hostage. So if I'm blinking twice to watch that, you know, save me. No, I'm playing. He will be tied up. He will be tied up and we won't be in my room. We'll be some in some like dank, dirty <laughs> ass basement. Like you might be scared for your life or something. Oh, God. No, nah, but really like Capes Crusader looks like it's going to be the best Batman anything like it's it's I swear I've had like this vision of what Batman should be since I was in high school. Yeah. And literally what I've pictured is what that show looks like. Yeah. I've always said like Batman should be in the 1930s fighting gangsters. Mm. And then like you look at the costume and like the way his ears go, I've always I've always felt that his ears should look like that. Mm-hmm. The costume is just so perfect. So That's how I always wanted the costume I, to look I like. I personally told Zach oh. how I felt about the ears. Oh. And, I, and Zach's not wrong, but in my defense, I said, oh. dang, it's kind of hard for me to like pay attention to him as Batman. I can tell the difference, but I see like like uniform X-Men Wolverine costume like <laughs> with the ears. And it's kind of hard for me because it's, it's triggering. Like, how do you think I feel watching it? That's why I'm like, ah, the ears. But you, what is it, the ears? Like, um, that's what I'm... <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying like he said what is it the ears <laughs> you know like uh, but like i'm still no gonna you know a- batman should be saying that to wolverine oh. okay batman i'm just gonna say it well batman was created in the year 1939 okay, okay? detective comics number 20 27 right all right i could did it too even yeah i'm like <laughs> <laughs> two seven dc hire him he's trying to get booked no but, I'll um, cook to you, see. Let me cook. <laughs> but, um, Marvel? That's crazy. Literally, when um, <laughs> literally when um, when Batman was created, mm. like his first costume ever, those were how the ears looked. No, you're correct. So from the moment he was born, he had those ears. Yeah. So if anyone should be saying that line, it should be from him to Wolverine. Like, <sighs> hey, Wolverine. Know. What is it? The the ears? But like, hear me out though. Like Wolverine, like kind of fits. You know, like. He he fits it like he fits the aesthetic better. Like I mean, you may have more. They're not first, even real he'll... ears. He's trying to emulate. <laughs> his hair is already oh, like that. So you... His hair is already oh, like so that. He's trying petty. to make fake hair. Oh, you want to be petty? His, his mask. That all that whatever that is on his mask. He's just trying to copy his hair when his hair is already like that. All right. It's like I can't argue, bro. With you look ridiculous wearing yellow and blue like I that. I can't man. argue. It looks cool on all the other X Men except you. I can't. Ar- Yo, I kind of wait. I hate that you say that because I always felt that way, right? Like I'm not gonna lie. So he admits oh, it. Hold on. Hold on, <laughs> hear me out. But I will admit, like I do, I always hated the yellow and blue. I don't know why it just didn't it didn't fit him. But when, why do you think but, they never put in the movie? But also, when he was in X Men Evolution, they had him in orange, and I was like, oh, this is just worse. Like they just don't know how to dress my boy Logan up. At What's all. next? They're gonna put him in a blue and gray suit. Chill, just leave him be. All right, just leave my boy be. All right? They're gonna put him in blue and gray one day, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to you, and I'm gonna be like, hey James, who's copying who now? All right. I, I mean, the, those wide eyes, right? He's got wide eyes, too, in that, under that mask, right? I guess. Who started that? Who started the white eyes, huh? I, and they both Out of lo- all superheroes, and they both the one lost their parents. the white eyes. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll defend my Put some respect Batman. on my boy Logan's name, though, all right? All right? He did great. Hey, don't get me wrong. I'm still I'm still a Logan simp, too. Yeah. Just not as much as a Batman simp. I know. You're one of those bat boys. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bat boy. <laughs> That's well, crazy. Well, you're... I'm a bat boy. <laughs> I'll be the sidekick. Uh, you're on bat boy. That's crazy. Get out of here, it's Robin. Right. No I one guess, wants to hear from you, dick. I guess you in dick. all... dick. Richard. How dare you? You can't say his name like that. Well, Richard's a dick. That's literally. Cr- that's crazy. So when Nightwing, you know Nightwing's. Let me tell you something. Them Nightwing fans, they will attack you. All right. As someone who posted Nightwing as a clip on TikTok, and I'm still having five thousand people liking that. 
They will attack you. They don't play about their Nightwing. I'm not yeah, going to lie. They love their Nightwing, all right? Yeah, I mean, I like Nightwing, too. You know, If right. I was a Batman sidekick, I'd, I'd step the motherfucker out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, let's, let's get moving on to the next topic. Um, so, you and I recently watched a movie, one and two of it. Ooh, you're talking about Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths? That's yo. That's crazy. But yes, what's crazy? <laughs> Just the way you said it. <laughs> on Earths, it like on Earths. <laughs> that's crazy. I just say it loud and clear for the audience to understand what we're talking about. Yes. Yo, have you guys seen Crisis? Man? Yes. We would like to know your opinions, um, yo. because I we have a lot to talk about, a lot to discuss oh, on dude. that. Um, dude, I've been waiting to see that story adapted for so long. Yeah, right. Like it kind of feels like it was a huge comic book, right? And for it to finally be 2024, for it to be here back in like it was in the late 90s, you know, or is it like late 90s, early like I eight, think it was the 80s. 80s. Yeah, either was, the 70s or the 80s. No, it was the 80s. I think. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think it's 85 and 86 is when it when it, it started. It was a year comic. Okay. But the crazy part is like it took so long for us to finally get a movie. You know. So like when I played DC Universe Online, the video game. Um, when I was younger, that's when I kind of knew about it. So I wanted to get more knowledge about it because I told you I was just like getting the feel for like DC Universe and everything and, and whatever. So when I played the game and I seen this big, you know, anti monitor, I was like, what is that? And I see Supergirl and Flash like dealing with it. So that's how I knew instantly like, oh, they're a major connection to this like storyline. Um, so, but tell me what's your opinion about the movie overall? Because at first I ain't going to, I ain't going to hold you. I told you from the jump, I was like, I'm not feeling the animation. I don't know. I just feel like it's too cartoony or Yo, weird looking. That, that really threw us off. It didn't did it? through us. Yeah. Because we like we watched the trailer. The animation looked I yeah, just I'm not to put it plainly, lie. looked like complete garbage. Trash bags. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Trash bags. At first. At first, at first, at first, at first. Really? You thought the animation got better? And two. Like it didn't change. But something about it, like when we get into the bat uh, civil war scene, I don't know. The, okay. the, it it kind of won me over again. Like okay. I was like, okay, I kind of like this art style out of like three D jumping out of the comic book kind of an art style that I'm getting. It started hmm. literally from Huntress Kick is where I saw like, oh, this is giving like a three D like like pop out comic book strip, like you know, from when I saw the fight scene with them. But before okay. we get there, um, yeah, yeah, the um. Yeah, when yeah, when we saw the animation that like we thought it was gonna end up being trash and we watch it. Yeah. And we loved it. We loved it. We loved it. We loved it. At first I kept reading, I'm like seven out of ten, seven out of ten. Then I was like, wait, eight, wait, nine. Okay, yeah. I was like, this is cooking. Yeah. This is cooking. They, and I'm I'm not really crazy. Let them cook on that one. <laughs> yeah, let them cook on that one. But I'm not crazy about Flash, right? But because at first it was annoying. Like with Flash I really did, did not like the Flash jumping back and forth. With the the, that was yeah. I did think at first that that was gonna break the movie. Yeah, right. Because I'm like, okay, this is annoying. Like, I kind of get the purpose, but like, all oh, right, like. But then I guess like after a while, it pieces together really well, and it makes sense why he kept jumping back and forth. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is all connecting. And you called it. You called it first. Um, with the first scene being the last wait, scene. Wait, wait, Are we gonna... Should we give a spoiler warning oh, before we do oh. this? All right. Just know if you're watching our podcast, we're all about spoilers here. Yeah. We've spoiler whatever we've alert. already seen, we're just gonna discuss it. Spoiler alert. Um, but you did call it... Well, we don't have to go too in-depth, but we could just talk about how, like, the first scene right. and you connected it with the last scene and you called it the first oh, yeah. time we watched the movie and you was like... Because I know the comic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you called it. I was like, yo, like, I don't know. I know Flash is going to be doing his time travel thing here. Yeah. He's going to be going back, trying to, like, warn people. Yeah. And I know it's probably going to end up with him dying, which he could have, although it's it was somewhat unclear. Or... Yeah. I mean, even with one... <laughs> um, either, either with a certain woman warrior with her tiara... Um, Oh, these might be some more shots. Dude. Sorry, but, um, but even with a certain woman warrior, with her tiara being just like, I space. wonder who that is. Yeah, yeah, the really? woman who killed my girl Huntress. <gasps> um. Anyway, like I said before, yeah. Um. But it makes you think, right? Like, kind of like, um, because I'm excited for three, but it's so many plot holes. I feel like we still don't have. Right. And they also not everything from the comic is also in the movie. 
which is like kind of funny because like after learning about certain things in the comic and they switch a little bit like with like with Supergirl and Lyra Michaels and everything like I did thought it was like they still did it tastefully well but like for someone who doesn't have comic, uh, comic book knowledge and knowing that well Supergirl because some party some fanboy probably think like oh well yeah Supergirl right she's the one who who murdered a, cer a certain someone but originally she wasn't the one you know she still has a major involvement in the book like and the the comic series but she's not the one that you know did that murder you know which kind of sucks because now you made supergirl a murder like in the movie but like whatever right whatever who'd she kill again i'm trying to remember the monitor wish she did yeah At the end of although it said it said that he's still alive but not as like a, a human construct he's now like an entity why do I not remember this part? I'm it's when, she, whenever, part. when, um, you about to spoiler alert. Remember when? <laughs> I mean, we already said, like, just yeah, facts. Spoilers. At this point, we might as well go I just, up. I don't know why I'm blanking um, on this right when, now. When, when, um, what's his name? Pirate. Psycho Pirate. Psycho Pirate. When he manipulated Supergirl to be mad at him. Yes. Okay, yes. It, it was, like, right before, uh, the anti monitor actually came basically out. Basically right? come yes. out, yeah. So, okay. he manipulated Supergirl, basically. And, um... Yeah, she kind of lays like laser beam him OD hard. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. And and oh. it's and it's said that he could have used his force field, but because he didn't want to, he felt that he finally felt like that um remorseful like connection of like raising her and then lying to her and manipulating her. But also he wanted her to basically like I guess like now live on as his property, like just like, okay, well now you're gonna feel bad, you know what I'm saying? So I think he took that as like, all right, now you're gonna do my bidding for me since now I'm quote unquote dead. But I, I, I was told that he's still alive. And I think he's gonna be a huge part in three as well, but we just don't know how or yet. There's so many plot holes in three. I mean, is it safe to make the prediction that there will be a monitor versus anti-monitor fight? Um, oh, that would be nice. But I mean, it just makes sense. That would right? be nice. I mean, it's not going to top my favorite fight with Dark Dark Side and um, Trigon, but like that would be nice. That's my favorite fight. That was All right, that's, that's going back to Justice League Dark. Dark. Um, not the first one, the second one, right? Yes. What was that second one called? That was called something. JL Dark something. Oh, JL Dark um, Apocalypse. That's yeah, Apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, because it was Dark Side. Yeah. Yeah. Which is That's the whole reason why Flash is why we're here now, because it's connection of, you know, they told Flash to go back. So now we're here with Infinite Crisis. So it makes sense. Which is a very cool connection. Yeah, which is cool. Like, I didn't even pay attention to that. But I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's true. He did go back and ran. I did notice that while we were watching it. And then it even made more sense to me when they brought in, spoiler alert, John Constantine. Yeah. Cause, Who you didn't know, know his name for a while. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, like, I was... I remember watching it. I was like, all right, I, I don't think he was in the comic because I don't think he was invented yet. And it turns out we were right. Yeah. Um, so it, it is cool how they... Because uh, I, I did go into this expecting it to just be like a one-off type movie, but it was actually connected to their to their, their long-running so DC animated universe. But can I just say something real quick off topic? This Marvel and DC, listen up, because this is crazy. This is how I feel, right? Why is your animation plot-wise so much better than your movies? Why is your characters and animation really so much? What 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 can y'all tell me that as a big Marvel and he's a big DC fan? Like, what is that about, right? Because when we watch an animation and it turns out to be really good, like you get really good writers and like I feel like you really are like now connecting the piece. But when you do a live action, for some reason, it just pisses me off. What is what is that about? Prime example: Flashpoint. The f my bad. The Flash. You know, which the Flash was yeah. Flashpoint. You know, animation completely topped the live action. Yeah. Another great example, The Dark Knight Returns and Batman versus Superman. Mm-hmm. Again, the comic, or I mean the animation. Yeah. I don't, I don't get that. Like, I don't get how you can, I, don't get me wrong. I mean, you start as a comic, you start as an animation. I get that. And if you're going to do a live action, just like make it good. Like it's, it shouldn't be that hard, you know? Like, I don't want to, and that sucks as we just started this podcast. I don't want to watch a movie and I'm going to hate it because I already know, like, this live action is going to be a cash grab, a money grab, right? And it's not going to be dedicated to the comics that, like, what we read. Because don't get me started. When I read X-Men Apocalypse and then I watch X-Men Apocalypse, to this day I'm angry. To this day I'm heated because that was so trash. 
the live action. So trash. So trash. You want to know what really pissed me off about that movie? It was like, it was trash in the way that like non-comic book fans didn't know how disrespectful it was to the comic book. Yes. So they loved it. Yes. And I was like, all right, I know that you guys love it and it may be like on its own Mm -hmm. an okay movie yeah but like you guys are you guys really just don't know what you're missing it's also like not it's like discrediting the fans like you know i told you i'm a big x-men fan so me and my best friend from high school we was growing to college we was graduating high school we heard the x-men movie was coming out we was going to come link back up from college to watch this one movie we did we brought another third party who doesn't know anything about marvel comics um and we was kind of fake teaching her but she didn't really care she just wanted to see the movie (laughs) She's loving it. Our friend who doesn't know nothing about Marvel is loving it. She's like, guys, this is a really good movie. And I'm I'm looking at my girl like, I'm so sorry. And she's the steam coming out of you. We're me and my girl are both angry because we're like, this is so distasteful for the fans who knows about the comics. Heck, even the X-Men Evolution animation did a better, better take of the comics. You know, like it's just so disrespectful because like we're the real fans. We're the real consumers that's paying for your money. Without us, you wouldn't have a live action. So it's like, why are y'all so like discrediting it and just like messing up a good product that you have and you have the comics as your your guideline? You don't have to mess it up. I'm sure sometimes you're like, well, we don't have the rights for this and we don't have the rights for that. Okay, I get that, but then don't touch it. You know, like exactly. I wouldn't care if you would if you don't touch it at all. But sometimes y'all touch things and then y'all ruin it. Yeah, that's what I hate. Like for example, I mean, I know you don't like Ms. Marvel, mm. but as someone who <laughs> is a fan of Ms. Marvel. Mm. Like, the fact they wanted to touch her... Uh, not like that. Not like that. <laughs> Please, Marvel. But, you know, don't sue us. Touch don't. her powers. You know, yeah. Like, her powers in the show are completely different. And, like, stuff like that. Just... It does nothing but creates worse scenarios. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I think it is? Like, why... Um, why animation, I think, is better than the live action? Or just why live action just seems to be lacking in general lately? Uh-huh. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am a filmmaker. I went to school for filmmaking, graduated from there and currently in the business. Mm. Um, so I, I know a little bit about like the filmmaking process and all that, you know, there's a lot, th- there's a lot more involved than when there's animation, you know? So like, you know, they, they need to make sure that they got all the actors on contracts and, you know, all the crews involved and then. You know, when it comes to their powers and it's like, all right, spend this money on special effects and all that CGI and all that. Yeah. There's just so much that goes into it. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that everything it takes to make such a grandiose superhero movie Mm -hmm. causes limitations. Mm. And it's mainly because of budget and people availability. Right. You know? And it's like, you just, when it comes to animation, you know, you have the team that's animating it. And then your voice actors, you can have one voice actor yeah. for a few different characters. You can. You know? Oh, uh, they did that with Infinite Crisis. I'm sure Crisis on Infinite I mean, Crisis on, yes. Because Infinite Crisis is a whole different one. Right. But, <laughs> but, but they did it, though, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm in, like, almost everything animated. There's always, like, a voice actor that has voiced a few of the characters. Yeah. Almost in anything that you could take animated. So, or cartoon, you that know? That was a star lineup. I was shocked to hear Darren. Darren uh, oh, Darren that cast was crazy. That was a star lineup. I was really shocked. They even got a girl from Tyler Perry on there. Like, you know I'm hyped. But, like, I was just I was just shocked to, like, even... Although, she didn't do the best. But, you know, I still love you, girl. I watch your movies. But I was just more shocked to see that cast. Because that was, like, star lined up. Like, Let's look at the cast. I still didn't like the Wonder Woman. Because I was, she just kept sounding Brazilian for some reason. And I was like... Oh, yeah. That was a she, weird one. She kept sounding Brazilian. And I was like, I am not feeling this Wonder Woman. Like, what is yeah. this? Like... She didn't sound like... Wonder Woman. Um... This is Brandon Ruth with Superman in it. Was he one of the variant Superman? Yes. That. And then... I oh, that's right, because there were two, two Superman. Superman. That's right. And I was shocked that's with the right. other one, because I was like, oh, he's from Glee. And I was like, what is he doing here? Wait a second. And then the other Superman was the guy from the Supergirl show. Oh, shit. I don't think I realized this when we were watching it. So they had two <laughs> actual live-action Superman here. Mm-hmm. Voicing the two Superman. In this- oh, my God. So they basically had Brandon Ruth and Tyler Ho- Hoechlin... <laughs> Crossover. Tyler Hoth. Yeah, however you pronounce it. <laughs> I know, I felt that. That's what I was like. I'm not a big fan of that Supergirl or Superman and Lois show, so I'm sorry, guys. Fair. Um, Base. But that is really... And Grant Gustin was Barry Allen? Allen. Yo, I looked at the cast during this. I don't remember seeing That's this. That's why I said this is a star lineup. Burt Ward was Dick Grayson. M- Melissa ben- Benoit was Cara zor Oh, my God. This is actually... Star lineup. Dude, this is... <laughs> 
You're right. This is a star, star lineup. lineup. So you can't talk to me about budget. You can't talk to me about like like with animation like that. Oh wait, that. wait, 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 wait. You want to know something funny? What? <laughs> I did not realize this whole time. I was looking at the uh, the CW crisis on Infinite. <laughs> See, that's what I was saying. I was like, it's the it's. I was the, like, something's up here. Something is wrong. It's, it's the okay. other one because okay. um Daniel Chris was everyone, the Superman. Everyone disregard everything we just said. Crisis on Infinite. Oh my God, <laughs> Google's feeling like being a. Okay, okay. Now that the CW Crisis on Infinite Earths, that that was another cool. It was one, good. That's not it. what we're here to talk about. Okay, this makes more sense. I was like, this. Okay, this is what I remember seeing when, I, when yes. we looked up that night. Yeah, Jensen Eccles as Bruce Wayne. Come on, man. Come on, man. Matt Bomer as Barry Allen. All right, because okay. that and I couldn't Come even on. tell that was um, Matt. Really? Oh, Mm-mm. really? Mm-mm. No, like I knew he was in it. I just his voice was like I, just um, couldn't, I couldn't like hear Matt. Like I don't know why for some reason. It was like he did so good with Flash. I was like I don't even hear Matt at this. I always felt like he would be a good um, uh, Dick Grayson Nightwing. I always felt like he would nail that part. I think I don't know because he's so much older now. Well, when he was younger, younger then yeah, yeah he would now. That. Now he's definitely too old for the part. Yeah, Alexandra the Dario as Lois Lane. It's pretty good. Is that the one that was sounding Brazilian? Oh, no. no you said Lois Lane. Lane. We yeah. saw my Wonder Woman. Yeah. Nolan North is in this. That's cool. Yeah. Another star lineup. But. <laughs> that was the, not the oh, first. Miss out not the this. first star lineup. <laughs> You're not the, you know, I was like, there's no way these were like the actual voice actors. Okay. Is there anyone here that you want to specifically call out? Um, I just want to say shout out to Darren, Darren, Chris. Um, I love you since Glee. And if you watch this, just know I'm a big fan of yours. Okay, cool. cool. <laughs> you I got love so your, soft spoken. I, I love that. your, I love your brother too. Okay, cool. I'm still, I'm still mentally laughing that that we were that we were geeking out over the CW one, thinking it was. I thought like, you had the right one the whole time, dude. I did. I don't know. When I just looked, I just looked at the first thing I saw, and I forgot that there was a CW one for a second. Fair. So when I saw that, I was like, "Wait, so what? wait, which one? What's the what's the CW one called, and then what's the movie one called?" It's just called Crisis on Infinite Earths. Oh, okay, then yeah. The, the animated because that one was like a, it was like Supergirl had it had an episode called that. Like it, it was like they had the like each so show, they connected like Supergirl, cause... Flash, Green a uh, Green Arrow, and it was like one of them said part one, XCU, the other show was part you two. You forgot my favorite show. How dare you? I was just I just naming the first. Oh, thought, oh thought... Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, okay. I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack, but I'm a Legend of Tomorrow fan. Come see me if you got an issue, because we could talk about it. We could talk about it. I'm a Legend of Tomorrow fan. If you got a problem, come see me. Bar and easies. Um, but yeah. Um, I am a... What was that? Was that a Knock em Dead comedy reference there? Coming soon to you, book us. Um, oh, no, but... You guys uh, should. But, uh, you know, you really should. Um, but, yeah, what I was trying to say was um, Legends of Tomorrow. That's how I knew about it, because I told you, I never watched Supergirl. And, I never watched Supergirl, and I never watched... You know, I'm, I'm known. I, I can't find a book. I never watched Supergirl, Flash, or Green Siri Arrow. Siri over here interrupting our show. <laughs> she, she Siri was, got something to say. I think Siri was the one trying to square up on you. Just she was. Now. I think so. She, she said, said oh, you, you like Legends of Tomorrow? Tomorrow? She's like, unlock. I want to talk. Um, unlock her. Let's let her beef. <laughs> but I never watched Flash, Green Arrow, um, and Supergirl's uh, CW show. I mean, oh, I tried. They will come at you for that. That's fine. You guys can. You guys can. So you're going to be like, well, how did you watch Legends of Tomorrow and then not watch? I told you guys already I was not a DC fan. However, Legends of Tomorrow, for some reason, just, like, caught me. And I was like, and you know what it was? Legend of Tomorrow reminded me of Justice League Unlimited, and that's why I liked it. Really? Yeah. It's it's Ooh, it, it's if it's that good. I, well, hold on, because people will argue mm. differently. That is, But I just, like, team, like, um, because they're all from different shows, from the Supergirl Green Arrow. But I liked that because it reminded me of Justice League Unlimited. So I always thought that was pretty cool. You know, like I always thought like, mm, all right, I like that you guys are all like random. Even there was like two villains like together with the heroes. Like I thought that was a pretty cool concept and it reminded me of Unlimited. So like that's why I like Legends of Tomorrow. And I was like a diehard fan of that show. Like I watched one through five like series. Like that's how mm-hmm. that, that's how I knew about um, Crisis. Because of, um, because of that show. Yeah. Like, not that I knew, I already knew about it, but, like, how I knew they had it. Like, what was going on. Because I didn't watch all the other plots until they all joined together. Because mm-hmm. when they all merged the shows, that's when you, like, all, you see everyone. 
So Smart. I thought that was pretty cool. How's yeah. my boy Adam in that show? Adam who? The the carrot Adam, like the DC character Adam, A T O M. The guy who shoots. Oh, 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 Adam. Sure. Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I thought you kept saying Adam. I was like, Black I Adam? I'm like, I was like, I how do I describe? Remember Black Adam being there. Um, he, <laughs> well, you know, he, he also played in our favorite TV show, um, Scott Pilgrim Save the World. He, uh, not a TV show, but he was a voice actor. He never, he was one of the really boyfriends. Rough? Yeah, he was one of the, he was, Which one? he was, he was one of the ex-boyfriends. Oh. Yeah, he was one of the, the one that was in the band. The vegan. The vegan guy from the band. I think yeah. when she's like hello again friend and he's like playing the guitar with the glow like he's glowing with the white hair that was him when he was younger yeah he, was yeah. that uh who was who played him in the movie was, was that the he played one in like <sighs> ex-boyfriend number four or something like was that. that I remember he was played by like a f- a, a big actor it was was he's Zach also Efron. he's was also it? in he also is Zach in, Efron? no he's also who? was in um Legends of Tomorrow as Adam that's the no, same in, in the movie, I meant. That's him. Oh, it was Brandon Routh in the yes, movie, too? Yes, both of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. he plays both of them. He plays Adam and he plays the ex-boyfriend. Oh, word. Yeah, kind of shook me. That's like, that movie is kind of like star-studded as well, because they grew to be like big actors. So, yeah, but um, he was he was cool. He Another played, superhero started there, too, Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Um, He was pretty cool. I didn't recognize him at first, and then I was like, oh, like, there is a connection. I didn't even pay attention. A lot of superheroes. So we did kind of get a Marvel. Scott Program is like a whole superhero movie itself. It know? is, 100%. Um, I kind of like the action in, in Scott Pilgrim. Like, in the anima- animation series and then in, like, the live action. But the animation yeah. series, I got to say, is kind of better. Yeah. See see how that goes? Animation always. In the- but, like, without, well, I mean, it was already a book. So, like, I guess I can't knock them for that. But, yeah. Yeah. True. I mean, they were all already books. Yeah. Sure, you ate that. Let him cook, y'all. You ate that. I'm gonna give you Cooking. that. I'm gonna what give you I that. Do? Um, so next topic I want to talk about. Yeah, let's. So let's you know how we have like Marvel what ifs. Oh yeah, that show. We yeah. also, have, I'm pretty sure Marvel and DC have their own comics line of what ifs. What ifs? I never seen a DC one, but I seen a Marvel what if. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I mean, if if sure. you are wrong, DC DC should have one. Because I would like to see that. But then that's like what multiverses are for, you know, at that point, right? Like, that's the whole yeah. point of multiverses. Yeah, I feel like DC would because, you know, they have a huge multiverse. I feel like with animation-wise, like, they should get away with that. You know what I'm saying? Because that would be really cool, like, to see, like, a lot of what-ifs. Like, let's say, let's say, like, if you wanted the Justice League, like, you wouldn't use, like, Wonder Woman. You'll use her sister Nubia. Like, let's say if it wasn't like Diana, it was Nubia, her her African-American sister. Let's say if Nubia was on there, you know, as one of the Justice League, how would it how would it be different or like change it all up? Like it wasn't Jon Stewart. It was like Guy Griner or somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> Guy Gardner. Gardner. Grinder. Oh, speaking of which, the, the recent reveal of Guy Gardner and that Superman set, bro. Oh, yeah. You're excited Ooh. for that. Oh, yeah. You're excited for that. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But I just want to ask the viewers a question. So that way you guys can be engaged with us. And we would love for you guys to comment on the bottom. So this is our um, let them cook what if. So I had a theory. I had a question. So my question was to you guys. And Zach, you can answer this as well. What if in a, in a world where Justice League was fighting Thanos, right? Or we had the Avengers fighting dark side okay between the two theories of them fighting each other who will make it out alive and who will have a better outcome so you will have avengers fighting dark side and you will have justice league fighting thanos with infinity stones so with infinity Stones, that makes the difference yeah but then i also have to ask does dark side have omega the, an- the anti-life equation is it already acquired is he about to use it on them or are they still preventing him from getting it? Because if Thanos already has all the Infinity Stones... To make it fair. But I mean, like, will Thanos be snapping in this? Or is he just going to be using these stones against him? I think, for to make it fair, just to, to balance it out... Because then, like, that would be, un, like, not fair. Perfectly balanced. Yeah. As all things should be. Right. Uh, what, I, if that's the case, then I'm going to have to add Dr. Fate in there to give them, like, you know, some type of inability to not get vanished. So... Um, to be fair, he's just using the Infinity Stones. Like, you know how we watch um, the Avengers um, Assemble an- animation? 
So like he's just using the stones on them, but he's not doing the the snapping. Right. Um. So back to theories. Um. I want you guys to comment below and even give it a brief description of how you think it would play out with the Avengers fighting Dark Side, and then I want to see a theory of Justice League fighting Thanos with all the Infinity Stones. I would love to see you guys' opinion. What's your opinion on that? How do you think? Who do you think will have a better outcome between the two? I. I will state <laughs> that <laughs> I think uh, I think Justice League will have an easier time, not an easier time in general. It'll be a tough fight, but yeah. they will have an easier time fighting Thanos. Uh, Thanos than Avengers versus Darkseid. Yeah, just because when you just if you were just compare Darkseid and Thanos, I think most people would agree. Dark side is still just so much more OP than Thanos. Oh, that's a hot take. I mean, I then, I'm not taking that away from you, but I, I, a lot of people just do say that. But that's still a hot take in that fight. It's just uh, between. It's really because of the mega Omega beams. Omega like, beams. When you think about but it, do you think Thor can like take the hit, or Hulk can take the hit of an Omega beam? No, I don't they know. Not those Mega beams. They will. They, they go right. Dude, he. I'm pretty sure he can kill Superman with those. I could be wrong. But I, think, I feel like I haven't seen Superman get hit with an Omega Beam, so I don't want to know. So, like, usually people can't dodge the Omega Beams. Like, it's just impossible. Right, and unless only, you're Batman. That's I was just going to say. Only one person ever has, and it was Batman. Yeah. You know, can people see why I would go gay for him? Not really, no, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. Pride is over. <laughs> pride is over, my friend. Um, yeah, you know, in Pride, I was. Yeah, you was Pride Batman. for Batman. <laughs> <laughs> um uh where was I going? Yeah, so I just feel like if you were to take Dark Side and put him on the Avengers, yeah. Like the the person doing the acrobats on the Avengers. <laughs> don't come for I don't even like her, but don't do my girl Black Widow like that. I'm not I'll be the first one to tell you I do not like um, Black Widow except for Avengers Assemble. Um but besides that, don't do my girl Black Widow like that. You know, I just she just she wouldn't be able to do what Batman does. And then I look at everyone else on the team. Like, she would be the closest, but she still wouldn't be able to dodge them. And I don't think anyone else on that team could dodge those Omega Beans. Yeah. And that right there told me, like... With no prep time, they're not I feel it. like... I feel like, yeah, with no prep time, yeah, they're screwed. Like, I feel like Avengers are screwed when it comes to um, Dark Side. I feel like when it comes to Thanos, like, it's going to be a heavy challenge for Justice League. Because I'm saying you, you have, like, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash... Green Lantern, um, Martian Manhunter, who we got a segment for. And um, I guess you could throw in Hawkgirl and Vixen, whatever, fine. You could throw them in there. They're not going to do much. Love them, but they're not going to do much. They're like, they're just like the hits, taking the hits. But um, I would, it would be nice. Did you I, say I, Hawk to our girl? I said Hawk. <laughs> we talk about that, Zach. That's racist to Hawks everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Hawkman and Hawk Girl and Hawkeye and Hawk not happy. <laughs> no, they're not. You know, like this is not what their name Hawks should be, you know, but um but anyway, no, back to what I was saying. Warhawk. <laughs> John Stewart. <laughs> so Yo, chill. Let that Shiera. <laughs> we'll save that for another segment. Like, we'll save that for another segment. <laughs> Yo, you you messy in the in the superhero community. You a messy superhero community, <laughs> <laughs> guys. If y'all know, there's an insider. We'll talk. We'll tell you guys about that story next time. But we, me and Zach, found something funny with John Stewart and Hawker. We just find something super funny. Um, that's Destin. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that we'll, one day. One day we'll get one to of that. these days. We'll get to that. Um, but yeah, that's my theory on. And I want you guys to comment below on who you guys think will win in that fight faster or just, like, the overall overall outcome of that fight. Yeah. So, your girl, Akka. Did, um, did you say who you think will win? Um, yeah, I, I said I think Justice League will have, like, not That's as right. not an that. easy fight, but, like, an, an outcome will come, I'm sure. But between Batman and Superman, I, I think the two of them are smart together to take Thanos down. I feel like everyone else is going to be wiped out, though. Like, they're going to be on the ground. I do have a question, though. Although, for our, like, hypothetical, it might be irrelevant. Sure. But I do know that, like... So, this is not really the case with Marvel movies. But in terms of Marvel comics, whenever the Infinity Stones are taken out of their universe, even if they're still in the Marvel multiverse, if they're not in their respected universe, Mm -hmm. 
then they will refuse to work. They will not work. Oh. And there's been comic crossover events where Thanos has gone to the DC universe, mm-hmm. tries to use his Infinity Stones, and then he gets confused, and he's like, oh, right. I'm not in the our own universe. Mm-hmm. They're not going to work here. So then he gets So I guess screwed. the question would have to be Justice League, Justice League, go to their universe. Yeah. That's the only way to really make it a fair so fight. It, and it would also plot-wise make sense, right? Like, it wouldn't make sense for Thanos to go to an unworld known, like, unknown world and not be familiar and everything. It would be smart for him to be like, I want to take over your world. The only way to take over your world is bringing you to my world. And they're like, what is this? And they don't have no prep time. What are we doing? That would make it an yeah. interesting more fight because now it's like, well, dang, now who are you? What do you want from us? And how do you even know us? He has knowledge on you, but y'all don't have knowledge on him. So that would make it like a pretty balanced fight for plot. Right. Because the Justice League, like we already said, like they can definitely beat him. But him having that home advantage. The home advantage would playing equal the playing field. As for the other end. Avengers though. is just like, I, and then there's no Jarvis to help at that point. Why not? Because I feel like if Tony is not in his universe, how is Jarvis going to be communicating? Like, can, can Jarvis go through different multiverses oh, to talk Jarvis. to? Oh, Jarvis. I was thinking Jarvis Vision when you said Jarvis. Yeah, no, yeah, Jarvis. Jarvis. Is, can yeah, he- there's no Jarvis. So Iron Man's kind of stuck, you know? He can still be a boy genius, but, like, he's stuck. Like, he don't know nothing about Omega Beams, and he don't know nothing about um, I mean, Dark Side. I feel like Tony would figure out a way to... So Tony, I feel like he would learn of Batman, right? And in some sort of way, he would he would track down like Batman's like Batcave, yeah. and access his Bat computer. Yeah. You know, like I'm it would it would have to be in a way where like it doesn't make Batman look stupid, but you know, Tony is smart too. Like if his suit just, already like, not as smart. So as the only way I think that would work for plot wise if Tony is just like figuring out in his suit like where's like where's the nearest smartest like in this universe technology and he finds the bat cave and- maybe but i feel like batman would have that figured out too that but too yeah tony well, no, I, tony is smart cave, though batman He's cave smart, though. batman cave has been explored millions of times he makes it so secretive but let's be real there's so many villains that have snuck even his his girlfriend catwoman snuck in there more than one time like his cave is not it's it's not like we all seen it bro like everyone knows all right when I take an Uber there, I can Uber there. Like, like, stop. Like, just, I hate when Batman makes it, no one's allowed in the Batcave. Like, we know where it's at. Like, just, villains, heroes, we know where it's at. Just let it go. I guess that's a good point. Every other girl that Batman meets, he's always like, hey, you want to know my secret identity? All 18 of them, yes. All 18 of them? Yeah, he has like 18 love wow, interests. Counted. I didn't even count his bitches. I'm a Batman fan, to a certain degree. I, I like his romance. Except for Lady Shiva, but whatever. I mean, not Lady Shiva. Well, actually, no, he had a thing with Lady Shiva, too. So, yeah, she makes 18. Yeah, of course Batman would be into Lady Shiva. I'm not surprised. He, he did it with Cheetah, so. Oh. What did I say about your Batman? What he's does that say about you, huh? ba- you Bat Boys fans, huh? He yeah. looked at he's like, oh, that fur, that tail. That's nasty. That tail. Just don't even. <laughs> hey, bat, a bat and a Cheetah, you know, why not? I guess. She's, she's, a, she's furry she- everywhere. Is that what if that's what guys into? Then, you know. And he's leathery. <laughs> he's got a leather suit, you know, both animal skin and for the sexual times. <laughs> oh, I got you with that one. <laughs> you are your father's son. Am I? Yeah, I'm my father's son. Yeah, you're your father's son. But um, is he? Is he his son's father? No, you're, you're his son of a father of a son. Joseph. Son of a bitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about this after the podcast. No, I'm playing. Um, so, I have a question. For me? Yeah, for you in the audience. I'm giving them, okay. two, I'm giving them two questions today. Right? Two questions. So, Hit me. I love when superheroes and supervillains fight each other. Like I told you, my favorite supervillain fight is like uh, Trigon versus Darkseid. I always wanted to see that fight and we finally got it. And I love to pick people's brains, right? So I'm going to ask you and I'm going to ask the audience once again, two superheroes who I think will be in a really good fight. Yeah, I like this one. We're going to call this one Super Off. 
Super off. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I like that, I like that right? I like that. All right. Prepare for the super so off. I, I did some notes. I did some note taking for this one. Um, so everyone in the comments, I'm going to tell you guys about two superheroes. Or it could be two super villains, but today is superhero. Well, it's, it's actually more like a hero and a Yeah, I don't say is he really he could be a superhero at one point. He's like an anti hero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the first one stepping up for DC, you DC fans out there, um, I'm doing your boys justice. So we have Martian Manhunter, right? Oh man, Mr. John Jones. Yep. So his abilities is super strength and ability, which is like immune to all damage, super speed, flight, regeneration, shape shifting, and tangibility, which is incapable of being touched, telepathy, telekinesis, and heat vision. But his weakness is Fear of fire. So he has a, even though he could do heat vision, and I think that's so weird, like, but he has a fear of fire. He has a fear of being burned. If you've seen a lot of DC comics and animations, you have seen him being on fire and he freaks out. So Wait, so he's, so the the, the weakness doesn't exactly say fire, but it, it's his fear, fear of, fire. of fire. So does that, will fire still hurt him or? Yes. I think that's his fear. But it didn't, it didn't say that, though. It didn't say that, but it's also implied at the same time. Because there was one time he did get on fire, and he, like, freaked out. And he was, like, burning. So, like, yeah. He was, like, actually burning? burning? Yeah. It's still weird how they say it's a fear of fire. Like, yeah. it's almost implying, like, it's not the fire that's his real weakness, mm -hmm. but it's just him being afraid of it. And since he is so, like, like a mental sort of based mm -hmm. character. But also at the same I time, I sense. also said it doesn't make sense to me either because you have um, invulnerability, which is immune to all damage. So it's just like, how do you how do you let fire affect you? But he has a fear of fire and, you know, fear of being burned. So that's why that's why I'm questioning, like, if it because that is like it does feel contradictory. It does. I mean, even with heat vision feels contradictory. I was just about to say, like, how do you how are you able to like that's like. Like if someone were to deflect the heat vision back at him, like right, that's what. <laughs> well, that okay. wouldn't happen with Superman. Well, let's talk about his opponent. Step on down to Super Ops. All right, so his Let's next see. so the next opponent is Silver Surfer, right? Six foot four, two hundred and twenty five pounds. Um, so his abilities is bolts of comic force power, gravity, electromagnetism, which is manipulation of all energies. Uh, creates black holes faster than the speed of light and power cosmic. But Silver Surfer, his weakness is emotion. So if we all know this is a this is a fair fight if you ask me because if his weakness is emotion, and if you if you're a DC fan and you know Martian Manhunter, you know for an alien he's super compassionate, right? Like he 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 brings emotions into a fight. So um, I feel like this is an even playing field. Um, do I think Silver Surfer is a little bit stronger in the cosmic era? Yes. However, I, you know, it depends on the plot or the fight or the area or whatever, or the morale. But, um, I think that's a pretty even fight if you ask me. Yeah. I mean, they're both, they're both cosmic type characters. Right. Um, like, you know, coming from space, have like that immense power. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess you could say that they both kind of look similar. You know, your colorist, like <laughs> one's green, one's silver. I, you. I was really talking about the fact that they're bald, but all right. Oh, true. But sure, you could say that. You right. Know, they're not right. human colored. All colors matter. Besides green. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but you know, there, I believe there are two different types of Martians anyway. You know, they have the white Martians and then there's the green Martians. Yeah. Like in the DC. Yeah. So, you know. White power. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> that will, I will be scratched out. Um, I really just said that to your face. That will be scratched out. I promise we're best friends. I, I promise. Um, <laughs> this is not for um, political or promotional scheme. I promise we're best friends. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be a really cool fight. So you got Martian Manhunter and you have Silver Surfer. And I want you guys in the comments below to tell us who do you guys think is... A big deal in this uh, in this fight. Who you think will uh, like win in this outcome? I'm actually excited to see the comments in this one. Are we saying who we think will win, or are we waiting till next time? Let's wait till next time, right? Let's that'll be something yeah, yeah. to talk about. We'll, we'll like them give it. them time to you know, yeah. and then we'll have something to say on our you know podcast. But let's let let the viewers decide. I don't want to I don't want to influence them. You know, I want them to think for their own. You know. Can I ask you some clarification, though? Sure. Because I've always heard that this is his power, but I've never really heard, like, the explanation for what it means. Which which one? Uh, that 
um, that Silver Surfer has the power cosmic. Yeah. What's the power cosmic? Because I've always heard that, but like, I never really saw like. So what when that I means. when I was doing my research on the power of cosmic, apparently the power of cosmic is just the multiverses. That apparently is like a strong force field of multiverses. So apparently that's how strong the power of cosmic is. So it's just like just energy of different universes all gathered together. So you know how like 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 he can travel to different yes. universes. Well, okay. that but it's also an energy. So you know how like um. So you don't watch anime, so I is can't. it is it kind of like Flash with the speed force? Yeah, but think about cosmic force. Right. Yeah. Because that is like, um, with the Flash, it's like, um, like the speed force is like what holds the whole multiverse. Yes. And it's feeding Flash's yes. energy. But, so you're not, but you're not getting all of it. You're getting some of it. You get what I'm right. saying? So, yeah. But he has like a, he's pretty much powerful when it comes to cosmic and different multiverses dimension. He has all of that. Interesting. So that's the, that's the uh, power of cosmic. That's, it's actually kind of interesting how I did just bring how I did just draw that flash connection because mm -hmm. he can go the speed of light yeah. as he did say for one of his which makes his, sense because um, well quick question can flash go with the speed that he has can he can he go into different dimensions yeah I mean multiverses not dimensions yeah like, yeah he can right dimensions yeah. or universes yeah, yeah. so travel. that makes so that makes sense that'll be a really good fight next too if we ever like want to do a flash versus uh, silver server yeah maybe that'll be a good fight. I'm sure. I'm sure there's someone. But I'm sure that it's going to be kind of hard because they both have their own speed force kind of a deal. They do, but like, it it is kind of like they are kind of like counterparts in that sense. Yeah, I feel like there there's definitely got to be. There, I feel like there would be another character in Marvel that would make more sense for Flash, and I'm not talking Quicksilver because that's no. But there, there's definitely put some, another put, kind of put some respect on Pietro. Don't disrespect him like that. No, no, I'm not. I'm not disrespecting. But they are not. But I'm saying same as a yes. counterpart to Flash, just yeah. because that they're both fast characters. Yeah, they're not. They're not counterparts at all. Yeah, no, I like, agree. Their powers were completely different. It, different. So I well, I mean, it makes like a pretty interesting fight though, only because their their powers are different. Yeah, but you know, Flash always wins that. So. Against it was ever. Oh, I, I I meant against Quicksilver. Oh, in, oh, in and Quicksilver? Yeah, no, I'm not bringing yeah, up Quicksilver. In terms of Silver Surfer, that would be a good Yeah, fight. I'm not bringing him up. That would be a good fight. God, no. But it is just like, because Silver Surfer can fly and all that. Like, I don't really know if Barry Allen could exactly. But, I mean, if, Silver, if, if Barry is running and Silver Surfer is surfing next to him, with the, both with the speed of light, like. Well, sure, I mean, if they were racing, sure. But, I sure. mean, like, if they were fighting, like, if Silver Surfer just went up. But I mean, Flash is still smart to just like, do, 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 do. like you know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm sure he like Silver Surfer is gonna blast him. You know, if he lifts up, how can you, he can't physically hit him at that point? So he's gonna try to blast him. But I'm trying to think like, is your blast as the same amount of speed and light as you hitting him, or is that gonna take some distance away from you going up? And are you still gonna be going fast? You know what I'm trying to say? So that comes into play too. Wow, we're really becoming death battle. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Are we going? To, we're we're gonna leave the audience on this. Yeah, until next it's up time. To, it's up to them to decide. I think, I think we've ran about yeah. So yeah. wow, congratulations time. to us, our first podcast. Yeah, it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. <laughs> well, I thank I, you. I only guys. made one very bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you guys so much for the opportunity of having us here. We would like to thank Governors for having us for our first podcast. Yes, thank you, Governors. Thank you so much Comedy for having Club, us. And it was... thank you, Tony Walker yes, with Knockin' Dead Comedy. Yes, make sure to tune in with them as well. They're very funny, and we're very blessed to be here. And thank you so much, guys, they for do. watching us. Do they do. About any um, socials or anything? Or? Yeah, well, I was uh, quickly, I was going to say that they do. Dinner, Knock em Dead does dinner theater, so dinner um right dinner theater or yeah mm -hmm. dinner theater so you know entertainment you know so you should definitely hire them I'm about but uh guys. oh yeah i know i was yeah. just saying like since we were I'm just letting you yeah and so then for us uh you know my uh well are we you want to give them our uh yeah so instagram our, our instagram right now is currently being um <laughs> <laughs> under hiatus for um it's being constructed um but right our, right TikTok, our tiktok uh TikTok. let them cook a superhero podcast is on TikTok as let them cook dot a superhero podcast. We're on TikTok. 
you uh you guys can see us we're gonna post it everywhere so you guys can find us and then we'll post um clips on the tiktok from if you miss anything from the youtube we'll post clips from the uh tiktok so that way you guys can keep up with us and we'll have the link in bio from the youtube segments let them cook let them cook let them cook everybody thank you all so much for watching love you all